Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, people of God. The Lord be with you. We thank the Lord who has kept us alive to see this new day and we rejoice in his presence. Today we continue in our studies in the book of Job and the topic is dangers of desperation. The passage is Job chapter 7 verses 1 to 10. Is there not a time of hard service for man on earth? Are not his days like the days of a hired man? Like a servant who earnestly desires the shade. And like a hired man who eagerly looks for his wages. So I have been allotted months of futility. And wearisome nights have been appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise and the night be ended? For I have had my fill of thirsting like dawn. My flesh is caked with worms and dust. My skin is cracked and breaks out afresh. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and I are spent without hope. Oh, remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. The eye of him who sees me will see me no more. While your eyes are upon me, I shall no longer be. As the cloud disappears and vanishes away, so he who goes down to the grave does not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor shall his place know him anymore. This is the word of God. People of God, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the devotion today. Let, let your word indwell us, take root in us, and bear fruit, fruit that abide, fruit that give you glory, we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we look at the dangers of desperation today, we may want to ask, what is desperation? What does desperation mean? And the dictionary definition of desperation is a state in which all hope is lost, a state of hopelessness. And in such a state, there is no desire for life. There is no hope for anything good. And we can find examples in real life. A young man who was involved in the Niger Delta militancy issue, breaking pipes and getting involved in illegal refining of petroleum products, was challenged and asked, this is a terrible thing you are doing and your life is at stake. And he said, all die, na die. Whether na go fire or whether na hunger and wretchedness. For him, he had become so wretched, so poor, so hopeless, no job, no future, that he felt like it didn't matter if he died by go fire. Meanwhile, go fire is the process they use in refining crude illegally is the fire that they burn. This same concept we find in the Bible 
When we look at 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings, Kings chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. The story of the four lepers who were at the gate of Samaria in time of drought. They became so desperate, there was nothing to eat. And they said to themselves, if we remain here, we will die. If we go to the enemy camp, to the Syrians, we may die. Or we might be let go. That expresses desperation. At the point when you are ready to do anything because of frustration. And in our passage today, we find Job in a state of desperation. Job had gone through different trials of life. He had faced material losses and his health was in a terrible state. And so Job became frustrated and desperate. And the outcome was the passage we just read. He began to make negative statements because for him, hope was lost. All there was left was death. And in such situation, men begin to take desperate actions, terrible actions, wickedness, drunkenness, immorality, things that they could never have thought of doing. Today, I don't know what desperation would have led you into or is leading you into. Is it exam malpractice? Is it other dubious acts? Are you tempted to commit suicide? Are you facing drug addiction or some other substance abuse? Because you're frustrated and because you're desperate. That is not the solution. The scripture says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. And the scripture says that Christ Jesus is the Lord. And at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. We find that in Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. More so, that there is no other name given on earth whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. And all this tie into the mission of Christ on earth, which we find in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. Jesus tells us that he came to heal the sick. He raised the dead. He fed the hungry. He comforted the desperate. He saved this world. He saved me and you. If only you will accept his lordship. He is able to deliver us from every desperate situation. And that is why the church sings, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. 
And again we sing, Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal hope. Christ is your eternal home. Christ is your eternal hope. Embrace him. No matter the frustrating situation, we have answers in him. God has a wonderful way of sorting out his own. And that's why the psalmist says in Psalm 16 verse 5, the good news version. You, Lord, are all I have. You give me all I need. My future is in you. And when I know that my future is in you, when I know that my future is in Christ, then every situation of helplessness, of hopelessness, will be turned around because of faith in Christ. And so we have, like in the study today, the example of Abraham. who remained childless and yet received hope and situations were turned around for him. The Lord is there to turn around our situations for good. Are thou weary? Are thou languid? Are thou sore distressed? Come to me, says one, and come in, be at rest. Jesus calls you to be at rest in him. And with him. Will you come to Jesus today that you may have eternal life, that you may have peace and joy in the place of frustration and desperation, in the place of hopelessness and shame? Jesus calls you. Come. What are the dangers of desperation? It leads to blindness to hope. It leads to damnation when you begin to think whatever can happen, can happen. It leads to inability to trust God for salvation, for deliverance, for breakthrough. We get so, also so overburdened with our own problems that we find it difficult to reach out to others. And yet we know that when we reach out to others, we have deliverance. There is a possibility of falling into error Errors that will lead to regret. We think that God is not real. And like Job, we look down upon ourselves and upon our ability to help ourselves. We can go on and on and on and on. But God is our deliverance. There is a story of a lonely, lonely old woman who was contemplating suicide. But as she was about committing suicide, a little boy walked in to see her. And that was her deliverance. Today you can be deliverance to somebody. Reach out and touch somebody. Look for somebody in need. Look for somebody who is de de uh, desperate. Touch them with the love of Christ. Touch them with the word of God. There's also the story of the Sunday school teacher who was ready to quit because she felt she was not acknowledged. She felt she was not making any impact. Till a young soldier who was at the battlefield wrote to her. She got a letter. She didn't, he didn't know what she was going through. And in that letter, the young man was saying, I appreciate all you have done for me. It is because of what you've taught me that I'm alive today and I'm able to trust God. And that was deliverance for her. I had deliverance in crisis. I went to church, and the psalm for the day was Psalm 1, was Psalm 27. And it made impact on me. And he says, wait upon the Lord. I say, wait. God calls you to wait. I broke down, but I came out with joy. Our services can be beautiful. Every aspect of the service, the Bible study, the hymns, the readings. You never know where God will touch you. It might not be the sermon. See the Lord for your deliverance. Keep faith alive. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all.
This is our deliverer. Let us pray. Pray after me. Please pray after me. Father Lord, today I acknowledge you as my Father and Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You, Lord, are all I have. You give me all I need. My future is in your hands. Holy Spirit, please help me to overcome my weaknesses. Keep me from frustration and desperation and preserve me in faith in Christ Jesus that I will not only make my mark but enjoy the full complement of the heritage we have in Christ. I pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you very much. The Lord bless and keep you. In Jesus' name. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.